Let's talk about Pappy Van Winkle. Now, right away, some of the hardened bourbon enthusiasts among you have probably already tuned me out. Because in talking about Pappy Van Winkle, we talk about many hearts broken. We talk about many searches that have gone unfruitful. Hunts where you didn't get the thing you were hunting for. Yeah, that's uh, many of our experiences with Pappy Van Winkle. We just don't have it. Didn't get it. Can't find it. Um, which makes it worth talking about because everybody is looking for it. Oh my gosh. That's really good. Um, this is not Pappy. We'll talk about what this is later because I think it's going to be helpful for many of you who can't find Pappy in spite of your best efforts. So hang with me. We're going to get into it. First, what is Pappy? It's important that we understand what, what this is that we're talking about. Pappy is the general term applied to bourbon whiskeys, mostly bourbon whiskeys, released under the Van Winkle name. So, the Van Winkle line of whiskeys. Now, those include Pappy Van Winkle 15-year, 20-year, and 23-year, uh, and also the term Pappy can get applied uh, to the um, Lot B, which is a 12-year uh, Van Winkle Reserve bourbon, or Old Rip Van Winkle, which is a 10-year-old, 107-proof bourbon. They're all weeded whiskeys, so instead of using rye in the mash bill, they use wheat in the mash bill. That's what Pappy is, so gen like specifically it's that 15, 20, or 23-year but uh, many times amateurs like myself can apply the term to that 10-year and 12-year bottling as well. Sorry. It's easier to say Pappy than Lot B. Nobody knows what Lot B is unless you're really inside bourbon. So why is Pappy such a big thing? How did this extravaganza come to be? Well, in short... Um, well, I don't have time to go through the entire history of Pappy. But in general, I think it's found its success really for three reasons. One is the brand. It's an awesome brand. I mean, the, it's called Pappy. Nobody forgets Pappy. If you're like, oh, what bourbon should I buy? And somebody tells you Pappy, you're not going to go to the store and forget it. Pap Papa? Grand Grandpappy? It's Pappy. Everybody knows what you're talking about if you say Pappy. So the branding is amazing. And I wish I had a bottle here because it's a lovely bottle with an old dude. Sitting there, straight chilling, cigar in hand, crushing it. I mean, it looks like what should be on a bourbon bottle. And then Van Winkle, too. Like, that is a really rad name. And the family behind it, the Van Winkles, thankfully it's actually a genuine sort of moniker uh, because it's dope. They've got a killer brand, Old Rip Van Winkle. Happy Van Winkle, 15, 20, and 23 year. I mean, the branding's killer. And the age statements on all of those bottles, 10... 10, 12, 15, 20, 23, or on their rye, which occasionally they'll release a rye. Like, all of it comes and you understand how old it is. And we all want old bourbon. Even those of us who claim not to care about age statements or, or claim that the taste profile supersedes the age, we still like the age. I mean, it's part of the allure of bourbon is that it was sitting in a barrel for so dang long. So if we can sip something that came out of a barrel after sitting there for 23 years. I mean, I'm barely 23 years old. I'm a little older than that. But that's old. Really old. Super old. It appeals to something deep down within us. So the brand is dope. Super rad. And then this product, this weeded line of bourbons, which received you know, worldwide acclaim. I think the San Francisco Spirit Awards, the 15-year-old won Best Bourbon. In 2003, don't quote me, but I think it's 2003. And then since then, it's been really, really hard to come by this Pappy stuff because it's supposed to be really good. After all, one year, one of the expressions won best bourbon in the whole wide world. So uh, it should be pretty good. And it's actually been pretty good. Like nobody has ever tasted any line of the Pappy products and gone, this is not very good. From all the stuff I've ever read, it just hasn't happened. And me, like my experience with the Pappy line is pretty limited. I got to try a sample of Lot B due to a whiskey trade. 
And it was great. I really, really liked it. I mean, was it the best whiskey I ever had? No, probably not, but it was really good. And the, the experience that came with it, like, oh, I'm finally getting to try something from the Van Winkle line, added a lot to it. So it probably tasted even a little bit better than it should have because of that allure. So the products are generally good. And I mentioned that it's a weeded mash bill. It's not, it's not very offensive. Like rye, ride bourbons, bourbons with rye in them, I think can be more offensive to the beginner, somebody who's just coming to whiskey because of that spiciness. They can carry a little bit more heat, but a nice weeded whiskey is sweet and soft. There's not a lot to not like about a weeded whiskey. The most well-known bourbon brand in the entire world actually is a weeded whiskey. Most of you should know it. It's got one sitting behind me to my left. It's the Red Wax, it's Maker's Mark. Um, and that is a non-offensive whiskey. It's dang good. So they got a killer brand, a consistent, awesome product um, that's made by Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace knows what they're doing, and it's exclusive, like you can't get it. So it's, I think part of the reason it's so sought after is because you can't get it. Try as you might, it's going to be difficult, but that's why you're watching this video. You want to try and find Pappy. So because the brand is rad, the product's pretty good, and you can't get it, there's this massive hoopla about this juice currently distilled and aged at, at and by Buffalo Trace, previously from the Stitzel Weller uh, famed distillery of old. This brand just carries with it some of the best whiskeys and certainly some of the greatest panache in the whiskey industry. So let's talk about how you might get it. Well, I want you to look closely at my shelf. I'm not hiding any whiskeys. What you see is what you get. And there ain't no pappy on there. Don't have any. Now, you could get some, potentially, at retail. The MSRPs for the Van Winkle line of products ranges anywhere from just under 100 bucks to $350 for the 23-year-old. So, when it gets released here in October, there's going to be some bottles distributed to retailers around the country, and they may or may not price them at that level. But there's only two ways, really, you're going to get it. You could be the one in a probably 500 million people who just finds one on a shelf because some clerk didn't understand what they got. But because of the uh, pandemonium around Pappy, that's just not going to happen very much. Like, people know what Pappy is. There's no mistaking it. So it's either going to go out one of two ways. One is uh, liquor store owners are really going to treat their top customers. Two is raffle. And I talked about this in How to Collect Whiskey, my video on how to collect whiskey. You should check that out. So there's only these two ways that you're really going to get Pappy. And in the raffle, generally, even the stores that get a lot of highly allocated whiskey, they're only going to have a few. So if you enter a raffle, you're going to be among thousands of people who enter a raffle for Pappy. So in order to up your odds, you're going to need to enter thousands of raffles to try and score your bottle. Um, so get after it. That's one way, is buying at retail, you can enter in a buttload of raffles to buy Pappy at retail price. Good luck with that. Um, or maybe you know, you know a liquor store owner so well, or maybe you are a liquor store owner who's actually lucky enough to get a bottle of Pappy in your allocation. Good for you, because many liquor stores won't. It's not like everybody gets a bottle. The biggest liquor store in Milwaukee, or in the Milwaukee area, Total Wine, two years ago, they got one bottle of Pappy 23. One. I was at the raffle where they gave it out, and the line was bananas. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to score um, either through raffle or getting to know, to know a liquor store owner well enough that he would let you buy the bottle of Pappy that he got. Uh, not likely. The other options, you can buy it online. Uh, many states, you can order whiskey and have it shipped to you. And there are bottles of Pappy 23 sold by licensed retailers 
that you can go buy online right now by Googling Pappy23. But guess what you're gonna pay? Your, your kidneys, your liver, every good part about, well, your liver's probably not in very good shape if you're watching this video, but the best that you have, you will give up for Pappy23. Uh, I just did a Google search earlier today. I saw three, five thousand, like you know, three to five thousand dollars to buy Pappy Twenty Three online. That's uh, a car. Now I mentioned the retail price was three fifty. So the markup on this guy right now for Pappy Twenty Three is ten times if you're trying to buy it on the few sites that have held on to their one bottle or whatever or they've got 10 bottles and they're just selling them to people who have buku bucks who i mean because there are people who three thousand dollars is nothing so if they're trying to treat themselves or treat somebody else maybe they would spend that but i can't imagine what that life must be like so retail very slim chance online you have to be super wealthy um there is another option and that's a secondary market you still have to be wealthy if you're going to go buy somebody's pappy off of them. Uh, generally, the like secondary market or gray market value, black market or gray market value for pappy 23 is around 2 Gs. Uh, you can get pappy 15 for like 1400 So like that's the trade slash buy value on these Pappy products, uh, less, it's certainly less in the 600, six to 800 range for the Lot B or the Old Rip Van Winkle. But it's still, again, you know, six to $800 for a bottle of whiskey. That's crazy. But you're, you want it, you're the one looking for it. I'm just telling you how to get it. Don't shoot the messenger. Now, uh, the secondary market on Facebook, the big one, kind of got blew up because I mentioned before it's illegal um, to buy and sell whiskey just from person to person. So I'm not advocating for that. Um, there are still secondary groups slash assemblies that you can find if you wanted to, if you look hard enough or if you know some whiskey enthusiasts. Um, they can help you find Pappy if you've got the cash. There's a final way, which is probably the most ethical and the most cost effective. And I have not tried to do this because I like the whiskeys that I have, but you can trade. Trading is a gray area. It's more gray than the secondary market. It's more black than white, but it's, it's gray. And that is you can find somebody with the pappies who, who won a raffle um, or you know they knew the liquor store owner. And you can say, okay, listen, I've got a Michter's 10 Rye, I've got a Weller 12, I've got my Bellmead Single Barrels, Bomb Burgers, and my Booker's 30, and I'm going to give you all of that for a pappy. And they might consider that. So I could give my best crap, most of it, <laughs> to somebody who is lucky enough to get pappy 15, 20, or 23, and I'd get the one bottle back. Now based on what I paid for my whiskeys, because I generally get them at retail price off the shelf through owners or through raffles, um, dollars wise, that won't be, you know, that, that'll be good. I'll come out ahead of the person who's dropping five, five G's to get their pappy. Um, so I highly recommend that you work on building your whiskey collection and just build a good trading network. That's probably the best way you can possibly get pappy. If you know a better way to get Pappy, um, comment down below or slide into my DMs, let me know. I want to never stop learning uh, about many things, including whiskey, where you can find it, how you can buy it or trade for it. All right, finally, one last conversation topic for today. What if you can't find Pappy? Well, you're like me. Welcome to the club. Glad to have you. Uh, and there's a lot of good whiskey that will serve as a solid substitute. Now, if you're looking for something with all the sex appeal of Pappy, that's probably not going to happen. But if you're looking for something that's just awesome, that works well as a gift or a special occasion whiskey, 
that you can actually get. Um, I got some recommendations for you, particularly stuff that's non-offensive. I mean, stuff that people will generally like because of its flavor profile. So I mentioned that that Pappy was a weeded whiskey. And I would, well, a lot of people will jump in and they'll recommend, well, okay, here's what we can do. We can make what we call poor man's Pappy, which it used to be poor man's Pappy. It's Weller Antique 107 plus Weller 12. So, so this is Weller 12. Um, and this is not cheap stuff. If you're fortunate enough to find a bottle, this on the secondary market, what once cost people $30 now can cost them $150 if they're buying it semi-illegally. And poor man's pappy would take this and mix it with Weller 107, which is delicious, um, and they would call that poor man's pappy. Slightly older, slightly higher proof, um, and would be delicious, I'm sure. But again, expensive uh, if you can find it. And then Weller 107 also pretty difficult to find and not super cheap. So we're going to actually rule out poor man's pappy. Sorry. But I have a recommendation. I mentioned uh, the red label, the red wax. I mean, this is one of the sexiest brands. I mean, come on, look at this. Of course, this is not standard makers. Uh, but something like this is certainly within your reach. This is this year's uh, Maker's Special Release, the 2020 limited release. Uh, I am not even going to try and discern this, but it's the stave combination that they felt was most awesome that they wanted to release for their annual limited offering. It's not that limited. I've seen it all over Milwaukee, and so I bought one. I didn't buy one last year, but I heard it was great. And so Makers has been crushing it recently with their cast strength stuff. Makers 46 has always been good. Make Standard Makers is good. Makers 46 is really good. Makers cast strength is really good. So if you're looking for a really, really solid weeded whiskey, don't look away from Makers. You're crazy. And it's really budget friendly, like $55 for their limited release which is cask strength, 110.8 proof, come on. And then standard makers cask strength, you can get that for 50, I've seen it as low as 40. Don't sleep on makers. Is it pappy? Well, no, it's makers, but it may be as good. You should try a blind tasting. If somebody has some pappy samples, wanted to send them to me out of the goodness of your heart, I would set up a blind tasting and do it in a video for you. What I have in my cup is this guy, and it's really good, it's really good. It's a little hot coming out of the bottle, so I recommend just adding a few drops of water, let that sucker open up. But I get a lot of chocolate, I even get a little bit of coffee notes in this. It's deep though, like deep in terms of like a nice rich oak, not drying. So it's still got an oily mouthfeel, uh, brown sugar, and a little bit of caramel, but heavy brown sugar on the sweetness. It's a really, really solid whiskey, and you can find it, and it's special. So makers either go cast strength, or a lot of their private select barrel picks, they're all over the place now. Like, so many liquor stores have them, or makers cast strength, or makers 46. It's gonna hook you up. Now, other soft, gentle, approachable whiskeys that I think are special enough to really uh, meet the moment would be Michter's 10-Year Bourbon. It's uh, so good. It's lower proof, generally around 45, depends on the release. Uh, I mean, 45% alcohol, 90 proof. Uh, but it's fantastic. So I've been able to try that a couple times. I don't have a bottle up here. Uh, but that's really fantastic. Uh, Michter's release that I do have that would also be wonderful that generally has a, a lower MSRP would be Bomberger's. Um, this one is pretty limited, but um, a lot of people don't know about it. And it's wonderful. It's 108 proof and retails for like 70 or 80 bucks. So Bomberger's is fantastic. Or Michter's 10, that does tend to run you 140 or 150 but it's not 2000. 
um, and you have a better shot of getting Michter's 10 than you do Pappy. It's not, I guess, super accessible. So let's go with one that's pretty dang accessible right now to wrap us up. And again, these aren't weeded, these are rye based, um, but they're so accessible and delicious that I would recommend it. And the last one is the Remus Repeal Reserve, particularly batches three and four are lights out. I have open here batch three. And I was so impressed with this. Like if I was trying to deliver an amazing bourbon that I just had to get or give as a gift, use at an event, it would be hard for me to go away from well-aged MGP, which is Remus Repeal Reserve Batch 3. We're looking at 100 proof here and whiskeys that are 11 or 12 years old. Whoa. So nicely aged, a good proof, an accessible proof. And the ride is, is there, it adds flavor, but it's not overly spicy and it's certainly not very, very hot. This is so flavorful. All the flavors. I'm not even gonna try and articulate it just to keep this video short, but if you're sleeping on Remus Repeal Reserve, don't, stop. You need to go get one and you'll thank me for it. Comment down below if you don't like Remus Repeal Reserve and tell me why. If it's batches, if you only tried batch one or two, uh, try batch three and or four. All right, so there's some guidance on how to get Pappy. Um, good luck with that. If you like this video, like this video. Give me a follow. If you have any ideas for things you want me to talk about, send me a message. You can follow me on Instagram, at Drew P. Whiskey. Peace out.